children of God are by destiny children of exploits, designed to thrive where others fail, to conquer the obstacles others fear, and to do the impossible. But notwithstanding how great a destiny God has in view for you, you'll need faith to make it a reality. Faith Moments, brought to you by Patrick Fainu Ministries, would give you insight that would guarantee your victory over the forces of poverty, sickness, and disease. It would enable you to stand in the midst of opposition. And now, Reverend Patrick Fainu. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hello, everybody. Blessings of the Lord be upon you and your house. I declare that in Jesus' name. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Continually be glad in it. <clears throat> Hello, world. I come to you live this day Blessed Monday morning to each and every one of you under the sound of my voice. I bring shout of blessings of the Lord into your house and in the life of your loved ones. I declare that all is well with you and your house. In Jesus' mighty, 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 mighty name. Well, uh, <clears throat> today I want to um, look at... Um, um, as a result of uh, unexpected sudden events that has taken place in the last 72 hours or so about the state of Israel, uh, <clears throat> I want to seize the opportunity to speak about Israel in prophecy. Israel in prophecy. And um, it is my sincere prayer that uh, you will stay tuned and listen to what I have to read to you today. Um, in the meantime, as always, be a blessing to somebody. Share the broadcast. Be a blessing to somebody and tell somebody to tell somebody. Let me send a shout of blessings to you, Opie. Canada will send a shout of blessings to you out there. Ghana. Kojo will send a shout of blessings to you and thank you for um, behind the scenes work you are doing. Uh, please share the broadcast and be a blessing to somebody. All right. And uh, <clears throat> this is very, very important. Uh, we are living in the times of fulfilling prophecies. And uh, before <clears throat> I get into a bit um, deep of uh, you know, letting you to understand what prophecy is all about. Um, I want you to know that um, uh, dates and times plays a role when it comes to prophecy, dates and time. And so um, uh, please uh, just position yourself to hear what I have to read to you for your understanding uh, with regards to prophecy and especially biblical prophecy and what is going on right now in the state of Israel as we have uh, we learned in the last 72 hours or so. Please share this broadcast. Tell somebody, call somebody right now, share it and uh, let it be a blessing to somebody all over the world, okay? Um, do that, do that. Um, almost exactly 50 years in the month of October. Here we go again. Almost exactly 50 years in the month of October <clears throat> in the year 1973. What are we, 20, 2023? That's about 50 years. And in the month of October, here we go again. And... Um, here we go again by saying that um, we are repeating, pretty much repeating what took place and uh, what is taking place. And how do we see the whole thing here? What is happening here as Israel 
is under siege. Um, <clears throat> and so I want to take this opportunity to um, um, share with you um, some level, bringing you to some level of understanding about prophecy. Wh wh what is prophecy? Um, not necessarily when somebody, you know, prophesy to you, um, you know, maybe uh, somebody who calls himself uh, or herself a prophet or prophetess, and then they tell you things and, and all that. But I want us to look in view of what is happening or what has taken place in this past um, weekend, it's about 72 hours or so, what has taken place in the state of Israel to look at Israel in prophecy. Uh, but before we do that, I want to again share with you for your understanding, because um, if you don't understand, what you don't understand cannot help you. You understand? What you don't understand cannot do you no good. So it's very, very important that you, you please bear with me for a few minutes to share with you about uh, very this very very important uh, part of understanding what prophecy is all about. Now, as um, a friend of Israel myself and that of our ministry, visiting the state of Israel um, several times and making good friends and and over there uh, among others, uh, can share all that with you today. Um, it's 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 uh, it's of a, with a heavy heart, you know, to see what has what took place over there in the last seventy two hours, and um, just want you to know that our prayers, Israel, our prayers are with you, um, praying for those families who have lost loved ones, and um, um, we believe we believe that you will come out strong and come out victorious out of this as well, out of this as well. Why? Because we are convinced and uh, have the confidence um, by scripture that uh, you will come out victorious in this. And so um, our prayers are with you. Our prayers are with you. Okay, um, on that note, uh, please, Please get your notepads and uh, pencils and and uh, Bibles and all that good stuff. And please just follow in tow with me as I read to you today concerning Israel in prophecy. All right. We want to look at what is going on at this time. Very, very important. Um you need to first of all understand that prophecy is history and history is prophecy. Mm -hmm. Prophecy is history and history is prophecy. Now, um, it, is, it is extremely, extremely important that you do understand that. Please share the broadcast and be a blessing to somebody. Let me send a shout of blessings to you, Tommy, uh, and your house, Michael as well and your house I send a shout of blessings to all of you please be a blessing to somebody we are looking at Israel in prophecy um, as, as uh, <clears throat> a result of um, trying to have some understanding of what has taken place in this past 72 hours or so all right now prophecy is history written in advance all right Prophecy is history written in advance. And when the word of God states that an event will take place, are you listening? When the word of God states that an event will take place, uh, it's as sure as, um, as um, it has all already happened. All right? It is as sure to happen as if it has already happened. And so, um, give you example as Jesus prophesied his resurrection in Matthew chapter 20 and the 19th verse. Speaking of himself, he said, and I quote, 
and the third day he will rise again. Now we look back on the resurrection of Christ Jesus, knowing that it had already happened. When Jesus made this prophecy, he looked forward to the resurrection as if it had already happened. Beloved, I, I want to, you to understand prophecy because what we are experiencing and we are observing now is biblical prophecy where Israel and the state of Israel is concerned. And we cannot be ignorant about these things and think that it's just an accident or coincidence. And like I said, exactly 50 years in this month of October, here we go again. And go back and, and please, I want you to check this if you probably don't have any idea. Uh, the Yom Kippur War or the battle that took place in 1973 till now is exactly 50 years. And here we go again. Israel is facing another challenge. Well, as they came out victorious, I know they will come out victorious again. You know why? Because it's already established. It's already established. And so, again, our hearts go out to um, the lost families, and our heart goes out to our friends and loved ones in Israel. As um, a friend of Israel myself, like I said, I'm repeating myself. Uh, it, my, my heart is pretty heavy. However, taking consolation uh, by scripture that God knows what he's already put in place. So I know victory is already theirs. Now, biblical prophecy, biblical prophecy then, then present events, whether past, present, or future, has taken place now. Biblical prophecy, like I said, is pretty much what we experience, what we are observing. So if in case you were not alive then or born then in the last 50 years, something took place in the life of Israel and we are experiencing it 50 years down the line again. All right, prophecy is not only foretelling future events, it is also forth telling. Prophecy takes place when God's will is spoken forth through human beings. A person who speaks God's will or the person who speaks God's will or who foretells a future event, we usually call that person a prophet. Now a prophet then is a man who has a message from God. Now when we think of a prophet, we usually think of uh, the one um, of the Old Testament, for example, like uh, Prophet Isaiah or Prophet Jeremiah, okay, who will stand before kings and warn them of God's coming judgment. The New Testament also illustrates for us the, the ministry of the prophets. The very best example that I can think of is John, who um, authored the book of Revelation, which is a prophetic book from the beginning to the end. The book of Revelation is a prophetic book from beginning to the end because he, he speaks of God's message. All right, the true, a true prophet is the one who gives a hundred percent accurate prophecy and that is something I want you to please be mindful of a true prophet not 90% not 80% a true prophet is the one who speaks and 100% comes to pass his prophecy is accurate without error down to the um, to the to the least detail okay Anyone who claims 70% or 80% or 90% accuracy is simply not a prophet of God, period. Can I repeat myself? A true prophet. Prophecy of that individual comes to pass 100%. 
Any, anybody giving any prophecy of um, 90%, 80% on all that is not a prophet of God. God then is the author of all prophecy. God is the author of all prophecy. We also have the prophetic word made more sure, which you do well to heed as light shines in a dark place. Until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart, knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any in any private interpretation. No prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Now, look at Second Peter chapter 1, verse the 19th and the 20th verse. Please write it down. I'm not going to be reading these scriptures. I want you to, you know, write down and read it and check it out. Because I'm reading something I've put together for you concerning what prophecy and what we are observing now. Man is simply the channel by which God's message is brought to other men. In understanding biblical prophecy, we must understand that God's message to man is not bound by our limitations of time. Okay, the prophets often speak of future events as occurring in the present. Somebody like Isaiah, prophet Isaiah, prophesied in the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 9 and the 6th verse, is a, which is a very, very good example. And I quote that. Look at that. For, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince, Prince of Peace. End quote. Because prophecy is history written in advance, the prophets often will describe future events in the past tense as if they had already occurred. Mm -hmm. This becomes vividly, vividly clear when we realize that Isaiah, okay, the prophet Isaiah, if you look at Isaiah chapter 53, Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6, we see that it was written years before Christ died on the cross. You see, but I quote, but he was wounded, look at that, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Prophet Isaiah understanding of the work of of uh, the Calvary, okay, could not have come through his own mind. This could not come through his own mind. These words were inspired and written through this miracle of God called prophecy. I hope you're understanding that. The prophet will also describe the future events as one might describe a picture, okay? Because he was not bound by understanding of time. Events may not be in strict chronological order. The message of the prophecy being much more critical than the order of events. In other words, to understand prophecy, one must also understand the law of double reference. You must understand the law of double reference. The, do, the law of double reference means that some prophecy is actually fulfilled twice. And we are looking at one of them in the life of the state of Israel. Here we go again, like I said. We, we are experiencing 
the, the law of double reference. Here we go again. 50 years down the line. The first was 50 years ago, 1973. In 2023, we are seeing this for the second time. Here we go again. The law of double reference. Reference means that some prophecy is actually fulfilled twice. Once and very soon after the prophecy. The second in the distant future. That's what it means. And we are, we are, we are sitting at a perfect state of that even now. The fulfillment nearest the prophecy is usually an historic event. The fulfillment in the distant future is a spiritual event. Let me say that again. The fulfillment nearest the prophecy is usually an historic event. The fulfillment in the distant future is a spiritual event. What has not been fulfilled in the first event, we know will be fulfilled in the second event. Now look at Matthew, the 24th chapter. Matthew, the 24th chapter, and uh, please make sure you read the entire chapter uh, to have a clear and a better understanding. Now, if you look at Matthew 24, it's a good illustration. Matthew 24 is a good illustration of the law of double reference. In this chapter, Jesus was predicting the destruction of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. With an amazing accuracy, Jerusalem was destroyed by the Roman army in, the, in, in 70 AD. <laughs> Are you getting this? With accuracy, 100%, not 99.9, 100%. Jerusalem was destroyed by the Roman army in the 70 AD. Now this chapter, however, also describes events that will take place before, during, and after the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God has clearly, has very clearly, a purpose in the law of double reference. In the law of double reference. Now this fulfillment of the near event gives assurance and builds our faith to believe that the events in the near future or in the in events in the near, in, in, events in the near, oh boy, oh my tongue now, here help me Holy Spirit, the, fulfill, <laughs> the fulfillment of the near event gives assurance and builds our faith to believe that the events in the distant future will take place. Hmm. Jesus predicted the destruction of Jerusalem. And as you look into history books and see the accuracy of details concerning this event, it builds our faith to believe God, even in this situation that has taken place for the second time in 50 years. We believe God that his word will be performed. Israel will be victorious again. For with the same accuracy, he is describing the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ back to this earth. <laughs> you better believe it. While prophecy in general is absolute, we must also consider the fact that some prophecies are conditional. After Jonah had learned his lesson in the belly of the great fish, he then obeyed God and went to the city called Nineveh. Those of you who know the story. There, God gave him a message. His prophecy is given, if you want to see that in the book of Jonah, uh, the third chapter and the fourth verse. Jonah chapter 3 and verse 4. Let me read that to you. And Jonah began to enter the city of the f uh, on the first day's walk. Then he cried out and said, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. 
Now, even though there was no clear condition to this prophecy, we know that the people of Nineveh repented. And we also know that the city was not destroyed. Now, the condition to this prophecy then was repentance. You see, the condition was repentance. They ought to repent else. Now, if the people of Nineveh would have refused to repent, they would have been destroyed in 40 days, exactly as it was stated in the prophecy. It is very important that we do not put conditions on all prophecy. We don't have to do that. Not to say that because some prophecies are conditional. And I give you an example of that of Jonah to Nineveh and for the, for the people of Nineveh to repent else does not mean that we have to put conditions on all prophecies. We, can, we cannot do that. We cannot do that. If the people of Nineveh would have, have refused to repent, of course, they would have been, you know, been uh, destroyed. Now, um, in Psalms 110, Psalms 110 verse 4, all right, scripture says, The Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever according to the, all, the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. <laughs> therefore, okay, therefore watch this verse, which describes the priesthood of Jesus. All right, it's unconditional. This is an unconditional. It will never change. That will never change. That will never change. If a prophecy then depends on a human being, it may certainly be conditional. However, it, if it relates to God, it cannot be conditional unless the condition is clearly stated. Get the revelation here. Okay? Prophecy, therefore, in itself, is one of the most exciting studies in the Word of God and one of the most beautiful parts of prophecy is the unusual way that God has chosen to communicate his message to man. It is beneficial, therefore, then, in any study of prophecy to look at the methods of prophecy. Prophecy itself is one, like I said, one of the most exciting studies of the Word of God. Now, over and over and over you will find that men receive prophetic revelation through dreams and sometimes visions. Through dreams and visions. The foundation for this message, okay, you can find this um, in Numbers chapter 12. Go to Numbers chapter 12. Numbers chapter 12 and the sixth verse. Numbers chapter 12 and the sixth verse. And hear this. Then he said, hear now my words. If there is a prophetic or a prophet among you, if there's a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. And I speak to him in a dream. Now, one of the clearest examples of this method is found in the story of Joseph as well. Remember how Joseph had a dream and he told his brothers the dream. Uh, let's look at that. Joseph's scripture says, Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it to his brothers and they hated him even more. All right. And the dream binding sheaves. Um, and uh, hold on, hold on. Let me not go ahead of myself. Remember that when Joseph told his dream to his brothers, Okay, first of all, he was loved by his father. Okay, and uh, the kind of, um, you know, attention he was getting and all that. Sometimes, you know, parents have to be careful of how they tend to give more attention to one than the other. And of course, this is something that uh, was, was, was experienced in the, in the household of Joseph. Now he comes to tell his brothers of a dream that he had. A dream that in its interpretation, his brothers were literally bowing to him. 
Well, they, they hate scripture, so they hated him even the more. In other words, they hate him for being the loved one, if you will. So watch this now. Joseph dreamed, dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him the more. So he said to them, please hear this. This is what he said. Please hear this. Please hear this dream, which I have dreamed. There we were. Watch this now. There we were, hmm, binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheave arose and also stood upright. And indeed, your sheep stood all around and bowed down to my sheep. Now, if you look at Genesis, this can be found in Genesis chapter 37. Go to Genesis chapter 37. And uh, from the uh, fifth to the seventh verse, you see that. So, watch this. Now, this vivid prophecy was fulfilled many years later after Joseph was sold into slavery. Like I said, prophecies can come through visions and dreams. <sighs> the vivid prophecy was fulfilled many years after Joseph was sold into slavery. He then became a leader in Egypt. And through a devastating famine, he saw his brothers come to Egypt asking him for food. That's what that dream prophecy meant. Through dreams. The prophetical dream usually occurred when the prophet was in the state of unconscious sleep. Okay? On the other hand, a vision usually occurred while the prophet was conscious or awake. Even though the prophet can be conscious, it was not uncommon to see him caught away in the spirit of prayer. In the spirit of prayer. Now, before um, John gives us the book of Revelation, which is in itself a book of visions, uh, he tells us uh, how it was revealed. Now, if you look at Revelation chapter 1 and the 10th verse, 10th uh, and, the, and the, the 11th verse, look at that. It says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write it in a book. And send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pegamos, to Tithria, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Or Laodicea. Now, in these dreams and visions, the prophet simply wrote down what he saw and heard. In this way, God preserved the accuracy of the prophecy. To understand prophecy, it is extremely, therefore, important to grasp the meaning of the symbols and the types pictured in a dream or in a vision. Please understand that. To understand prophecy, it is very, very important, extremely important that you understand to grasp the meaning of the symbol and the types pictured in the dreams or the vision. A symbol is a person, event, or thing which pictures the message God has for man. A prophecy rich in symbolism is found um, in the book of uh, let's go back to the book of Isaiah again Isaiah Isaiah chapter 6 Isaiah chapter 6 please read that chapter 6 verse 1 to the 8th verse Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 to the 8th verse now a portion of this prophecy clearly illustrates this point that 
in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two, he covered his face. And with two, he covered his feet. And with two, he flew. <laughs> Look at Isaiah chapter 6 again. Look at verse 1 and verse 2. The seraphim. Okay, you see that there. The seraphim, an elite group of angels, symbolize here the character of God and his re relation to man. The two wings covering the face speak of the holiness of God. The wings covering his feet or the feet speak of the humility of man in the presence of the holy God. And the two wings flying speak of faithful service that is expected of those who love God. <laughs> now, I've heard so many times people say, no, they don't like to read the book of Revelation because it's too scary and it's too scary and it's too scary. Beloved, uh, nothing can scare you more than not knowing what God has said. In this past 72 hours, I've been speaking to quite a few you know, people and interestingly to find out they are not aware of what has taken place. Not aware, not aware of what has taken place. In the understanding prophecy, through symbols, always remember to take the symbol literally okay don't try to make any religion out of that even though the symbol is picturing something different than itself some resemblance can be recognized between the symbol and the spiritual truth which is symbolized now when we talk about israel in prophecy we have seen the law of reference that we saw Israel finding itself 50 years ago in this same form or in, in, in this manner of not having peace. Psalms 122, the sixth verse, we see that we are to pray for the peace. Of Jerusalem. We are to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I want you to think about what I've just shared with you. Now I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue. But I want you to just have a silly moment here to just think about what is prophecy? And to see Israel, the state of Israel in prophecy. We are living in the times, beloved. You just cannot be ignorant about what is going on around you. You know, as we see in, in, in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, Jesus spoke of a lot of things that is to come. Thousands of years ago, those prophecies was mentioned. History tells us that 100 years ago, just past two years, the world experienced a pandemic. A pandemic. And 100 years later, we saw a repetition of a world pandemic. Please do not take prophecies as something that don't mean nothing. Especially, especially if you know a man or a person of God whose prophecy is accurate. And like I said, a true prophet 
is the one who speaks and gives accurate accurate message because what he says comes to pass 100% of the time not 99 not 87 not 30 but 100% watch that individual we see some in scriptures like I, I shared with you, give you an example like Jeremiah, like Isaiah. These people prophesied concerning that which is to come. Prophecy, prophecy is something that we cannot let it um, skip. We cannot let it skip. We cannot let it skip because it is very, very, very important and it's something that we need to watch. And right now, we are experiencing Israel in prophecy, in the law of reference. Here we go again. What is prophesied concerning you? <laughs> Let me tell you about me. The story goes that when I was born and uh, was dedicated in the house of God, a prophecy came by God that I, me speaking to you will end up preaching the gospel all over the world. Guess what? As much as this is not what I want to do, this is not what I wanted to grow up to do. A prophecy of God is being fulfilled. You see me here sitting here not talking to you about how to become a mechanic. I'm not talking to you about any other stuff. I'm talking to you about the things of God. Well, as much as I didn't want to and I did not like to here I find myself. It's any more something that I, I just can't wait to share with the world the goodness of God. I don't know what has been prophesied concerning you. But beloved, take it serious. Especially if you know that it came from a person, a true prophet. Well, we still have some not true prophets. Those who prophesize. <laughs> but on a serious note, what are we experiencing in the state of Israel now? Prophecy being fulfilled. And so among others. I'm going to pause here. I have more to share with you, but I don't want to take too much of your time because I want it to sink in. Have a silly moment on this. Take time and ponder on what you have heard. In case you just missed it, you can get it again, this message, to hear it and hear it again. You can find it on our YouTube channel. Go to our YouTube channel and put in the name there. Put my name, Patrick Quino Ministries or Patrick Quino Global Ministries. You can get it there. You can also get it on our website. But it's very, very important for us to look at what is happening in the last 72 hours. And as we speak, thousands and thousands have lost their lives. And we are not even sure of how many people has, has still not even been found. We are praying 
and we are standing with the state of Israel. I'm a friend of Israel. Anybody who knows me knows that. I visit Israel just about every, every year because you, I, you just can't get enough of the historic event that the place has to offer. And so it is my sincere prayer that you will join us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. As scripture say, tells us in Psalms 122 and the sixth verse, pray for loved ones who have lost their life, loved ones who have lost families. Beloved, these events cannot be taken lightly. You know why? It can escalate to your doorstep. I'll come to you again and tell you why. Until then, let me just present Jesus to you and that if you have not made him as Lord and Savior, beloved, you don't have eternal life. How do I know that? Scripture tells me that. If you look at John, the third chapter and the 36th verse, you will see that. Because eternal life can only be found in Jesus. So give your life to him. Invite him into your heart and into your life. Make him the Lord and Savior. After all, he died for your sins. He paid the price of your sins. That when you receive him, God will see you as a righteous person, not as a sinner. And so I invite you, if you have not done that, for you to receive him as Lord and Savior. I want to pray with you together if you are that person. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this message and come into my heart. I am a sinner. I repent of my sins, of not believing in you. Forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. From this moment, baptize me, Lord, with your spirit. To dwell with me and to be in me. So I may fulfill the purposes for which I'm born. According to the will of God. I thank you. Amen. If you pray that prayer, beloved, sincerely, as Jesus said to Nicodemus, one must be born again. There has been a spiritual rebirth, a spiritual transformation in your life. I want you to continue to, to, to keep that faith in you. Never, never, never let it go. And I want to also be a blessing to you from this ministry by giving you a Bible, a free one. If you don't have one, please request one of us, one from us, and we will send you one free of charge. Okay? Let me encourage you to um, get to our YouTube channel and subscribe. Go to the YouTube, put in there Patrick Quinu Ministries or Patrick Quinu Global Ministries and get this message, hear it again among others. Or go to our website address, um, which is www.patrickquenoglobalministries, and get this message as well. You can also request a Bible even from there if you need one. That will also give you opportunity to look at us, see what we have, who we are as a ministry. All right? And partner with us. Be part of this ministry to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. I hope you've learned something. I have more to share with you, but I'll be coming back in about 36 hours. <laughs> That's by Wednesday. Join me same time, 10 Eastern Standard Time, and uh, across the globe, check your listings, check your time, and enjoy me same time here in the United States at 10 o'clock, a.m. Eastern Standard. Until then, let's pray. 
for the peace of Jerusalem. I always tell you, you don't have no trouble. You don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all thy getting, get understanding. Have a blessed one. See you soon.